Welcome back to Pro Shop. Today in this video, we are back into the HR Ute build. Now this left some time ago as all the work that needed to be done here had been completed with only a few little things like running the lines and wiring that the owner was going to do himself at his workshop, then it was going to go to paint. However, in this time apart, some new ideas came to mind and now it's back to see them created. Firstly, we could start doing those little things like running the wiring and mount the fuse box and relays. The cavity behind the seats were always the intended spot for this, along with the e-stop electric handbrake actuator. Because this cavity also led into the rear undertray compartments, I could run the AC lines in them. The lines would run from the electric pump that housed in one of those compartments into the cavity and through the center console into the evaporator unit. The return line would run into the bulkhead through onto the dryer and around to the condenser. Those lines were hidden up into the radiator support and inner guard. While I had the radiator support apart, I modified the bonnet latch by converting it to pull from underneath so the release cable could be hidden too. I smoothed off the top of the latch and plated the hole where it would usually come out of the engine bay and then I could run the cable inside the radiator support and inner guard. Next was the custom intake. The idea was to have dual symmetrical pipes coming from in behind the grill where the blinkers would usually sit. Then to remove the blinkers altogether and customise the grill so as not to see the intake. I came up with the idea of making the room behind the grill into an air box that would house an air filter. I made the intake by punching out a 4 inch hole from the radiator support and filling it in with perforated steel. Then behind it, I made an alloy plate that would hold a thin panel style air filter and designed it so that it could be removable. Then by punching out a hole from that panel, I welded a collar for a silicon bend to mount to. This would not only hold the intake tube in place, but also be removable to get access to the filter for servicing. The original throttle body sat too close to the radiator for me to make a neat 90 degree bend, let alone merge two together. So a new fast manifold and Motion Raceworks 102mm throttle body with their machined Y piece brought the intake back almost 4 inches, giving me plenty of room to now make the intake. I started with a bunch of alloy 3 inch 90 degree bends that I had to snake around the top radiator hose on one side and the alternator on the other, which I meant I had to build them at the same time by mirroring them as I went. I find it easy to use my sliding miter compound saw for cutting alloy. It's quick, accurate, and with a lot less noise and dust compared to that of an abrasive drop saw. I 
I used tape to hold them in place until I had it where I wanted them and then I used a set of tacking bands and tacked it all together. These tacking bands make pipe work a lot easier as they hold the pipe in place and have a little window that allows you to tack the joint in place. They are like having another set of hands that hold the pipe as you weld it. These are a great tool built by SS Custom Engineering. I highly recommend them. I have no affiliation with these guys but I'll leave a link to them in the description of this video just in case you are interested. Now this is the first time using Aeroflow bends and while I try to use as much Aussie made stuff as I can, my usual supplier was out and these guys had stock. While it did weld nice and clean, there was a little bit of distortion in each bend, but these pipes will be painted so not too much of a worry. Next I had to mount the reservoirs. A clutch remote reservoir was mounted to the firewall with the hose running inside to the master that sat on top of the pedal box. Up next to the bonnet hinge on the passenger side, I fitted a pre-made Aeroflow washer bottle. The inner guard did hit at the bottom of the tank, so I had to cut the corner off it and plate it up. The driver's side I mounted a header tank and planned to run the lines from the engine bay into the inner guard and up to it. From there I can tee it off and run it into the cab and into the heater unit. Right now all I need to do is drill the holes that fit a dash 10 bulkhead for every time it passes through a panel. The overflow from the header tank will run back into the inner guard and back into the engine bay and into the overflow tank that I mounted on the back of the air filter panel. Now one big problem that the engineers don't like are these small brake boosters. They only really hold enough vacuum for two or three applications, so a separate reservoir and pump needed to be added. I managed to hide them up in the inner guard as well. Now I did get to this part of the build and was presented with a little surprise. The owner had warned me that this could happen and one day a very large box turned up. Inside was a Magnuson supercharger kit that a friend was offering to him. This kit had produced almost 700 kilowatts of the wheels on his Commodore and while he needed more power for his car, this kit might be perfect for the HR. Once I removed the freshly built intake, I could see if this kit would fit. And it would, with a little bit of modification to the bonnet and a new set of intake pipes. However, after a long discussion and even trying a different supercharger from another build, it was decided that by adding it, it would create a big series of knock-on effects. Cooling problems, new larger custom built headers would have to be made and probably even tubbing the rear end were taking this car down a pro street path and away from the street driven cruiser it had intended to be. So it was packed back inside the box and hopefully it will be used on another build soon. So that's it for this video. In the next video I'll take you through some of the other modifications that we're doing like single piece side glass and power windows, custom air vents and other little jobs that need to be done before it finally leaves the paint. If you want to know when that video comes out just hit the notification bell and you'll get notified. If you have any questions or just want to leave a comment, please do. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and liking. It really helps me know what content you enjoy so I can keep doing it. And as always, thanks for watching.